Good morning, my people. What's happening? Oh man, my lens is dirty. So, today I'm going to head over to my other garage and we're going to figure out what building materials we have left over there because I did leave a lot of fab stuff over there. And also later on today I have to bring this back to the garage. This is Virginia's Beetle. Uh, we got to bring that back over because we're both going to be working and it's no good to have it out here on the street just so someone can like come smash it or something. So we're going to head over to the other garage and uh, just see what we got. So, mmm, that hill kitty though. There's no good lighting in here. What the heck? What is going on? Anyways. What the frick? Camera. How about y'all just like tickle that little subscribe button because I know you're here and you're not subscribed also. Do it. Dare you. And then we'll be at 83,000 and then I'll probably have a WAP. I can't believe I let it get this dirty. So, like I said, we've got uh, all kinds of materials that we left over here. Black Sheep Industries, do not touch. Sorry, Nick. But I know for sure I've left some uh, aluminum and steel up here. So these are like my scrap. Like that's steel, steel, steel. So we can use all this stuff for hot side piping. Like this is still a good radius bed. It's another one. So we're gonna grab some of this stuff, load it up, and uh, get ready to build our hot side, basically. And I also need to find some pipe, some small pipe, so I can build something to hold our radiator up so we can lay it down flat. Hold it up to lay it down, weird. Now I know a lot of people will be asking about this Civic, and my personal thoughts on the Civic are, I don't like it, it sucks. Because you can't go drive it on the street, you'd get pulled over in like two blocks. So I just leave it here. One day we'll bring it down to like a Cletus and Cars, do a burnout or something with it, or boost it, boys. Whenever the border's open, we gotta bring this down there and then completely grenade it, basically. That is the plan. Unless someone wants to come offer me some money for it, I guess. I'm not, re I'm not really gonna use it. It's just sitting here doing nothing right now. And I know it brought a lot of you guys to the channel, but I mean, we're building cooler stuff now. This was like, this was a F you to life OD, being like, you guys, you guys did it pretty suck. You did it completely for 100% clickbait and you didn't even try and make it work. So take that. That's my thoughts on it. Suck it. And this is what we managed to scavenge from this garage. We have two uh, 45 degree cuts, I believe. We have 90 elbow there. We brought our hammers because I forgot those here. A couple pieces of four inch aluminum and then two sticks of uh, one inch tubing. So we're probably gonna pick up some more one inch from the store. They only have 065 there. Uh, I think it's this one, but it's gonna be enough that I can still bend it and we can still kind of make something up to hold that radiator support up. Oh yeah, and I bought this. This is a two and a half or three inch, yeah, three inch piping kit. Anytime someone local selling one of those little uh, piping kits, I always pick it up because uh, I can always use it on something. I'm always fabbing something for someone, and then I get, usually get the kit for like $100, so then people get cheap piping, and then I just have to weld it, basically. So I'm doing a favor for all the boys who need like quick piping that needs welded up instead of putting 45 clamps on it. Because there's nothing worse than piping with four different couplers on one piece of piping that doesn't need four couplers. And I know you guys have been there because you can't weld aluminum, but get a buddy who can weld aluminum. It, it makes a big difference, trust me. So back in my dirty old Habitat clothes here from laying on the floor, we ended up getting uh, two more four foot sections of just one inch pipe here, some uh, aluminum angle, and then uh, I forgot to mention this, but I do have a PO box set up if you guys want to send me anything. And John Kit on Instagram actually sent me this. He didn't leave a note with it because he was sending something else and he left a note with that, but uh, I really appreciate it. This is a, uh, I'll show you. It's a uh, rib nut kit. So these ones are actually aluminum style rib nuts, but I have a bunch of steel ones over there and I already have a rib nut kit. As you can see that black container right there, that's another rib nut kit. So it's almost identical to this one, but it's nice to have multiples of things sitting around. Uh, Little dies all fell out, I guess. So I appreciate it, man. You can never have too many tools around the shop. I think the first thing I want to tackle before I mess with the radiator, though, is trying to get this engine out. Well, I'm gonna get it out. 
Um, but I want to uh, try and weld the block because if we can't weld the block, then we've got to get another Gen 4 block that we can build real fast to replace that one. Gina be mad if I take that one though. this part of the block it fit in here something like oh wait that'll pin the other way something like yay so we're gonna have to clean up all the edges there try and make it fit back right in there and then bolt this nice thick bell housing on which has the provisions for dowel pins that are actually super super tight so this should center our dowel pin as long as we can get it on there good I guess hopefully so we've got to pull this sensor off and uh, the flywheel, and we've got to groove this out the best we can, try and get full penetration through it. And uh, hope for the best, I guess, really. Since we paid $400 for this thing, actually I think it was $450, it should be the cat's ass for pulling... Why do, they, why do we say cat's ass anyways? Is a cat's a, is a cat's ass strong? Because he can jump so hard? I don't understand that the reference. Someone Google it for me. Uh, but it should be the cat's ass for pulling these bolts off. Hopefully. Oh, cake. Not even trying. And just so everybody's aware, uh, this is a Performance World flywheel. They are in Canada. This is about $120 Canadian, and it's SFI approved. Just if you're wondering where to get cheap flex plates from. It's pretty thick, I think it's like eight mil thick, maybe. I don't know, it's pretty damn thick though. So yeah, SFI flex plate, really cheap. Performance World, whatever it is. I don't know their full website. You can already see with the bell housing on, it's kind of pulled back to where it wants to be. We're just gonna groove this out, try and clean it up as much as we can with the Dremel, and then weld uh, the gap. Hopefully, man. Obviously, I bought the wrong one from DeWalt. This is like a drywall one, but it still fits the regular size eighth and quarter inch bits in it. So we got a eighth inch carbide bit in there. You can see it's kind of a little bit of a fine point. We're gonna try and use that to just make a nice little V along that whole crack there. That way we can fill in, an, fill in a nice little crack. Fill the crack in. But yeah, so yeah, this thing works pretty neat. So, I spent a considerable amount of time uh, beveling, cleaning, trying to get this thing ready that we can put a nice big fill well in it, weld in it. And uh, I left some of the porous stuff there, just so it would line up where it wants to be pretty easy. And then we have this big groove down the middle we can weld now. I'm gonna bolt this up and then I might hit it with the torch just to uh, heat it up a little bit, try and get any more of the porous metal out of it. And then uh, 
Worst that can happen is we fail, I guess, boys. Propane, propane. Just gonna see if we can burn off any other contaminants that are in here. Well, here's the back side. I'm gonna let it cool down before I uh, pull the bell housing off, but it looks like I got good penetration, hopefully. It's like 200 amps or something to weld that. I did uh, try to add a bit more beefy weld in here and then I messed up the little seating ring, so I'm gonna have to get in there with like some sandpaper or something to get a good seat on that O-ring. And then on the bottom, I'm gonna wait until I have the bell off to uh, weld the rest of that on. Homie G's, watch it with me live while I pull off this bell housing to see if we got any penetration. I'm totally not accustomed to penetration because I'm usually only like halfway in always, so. Oh, Ratchet, where'd I put you? Oh, right here in the floor. It's solid enough to pry on now. So, we didn't manage to get all the way through, that's for sure. We'll just have to weld the backside too, I guess. I should probably give you a close up. Like, we didn't penetrate all the way through, but that's because I didn't die grind it all the way through here. But if we weld the backside and the front side, I mean, it should be pretty strong, maybe. That is it, my friends. We have a welded up block completely all the way around. Top here, bottom down there. And then, so there should be nowhere where it should initiate a crack. Although it looks like this might be cracked already right there where the threads were through. So we just gotta get the back half of the threads there. Sick. So I'm super stoked on this. Uh, that's just assuming that I didn't hurt anything when I welded it, I guess. You're probably not supposed to weld stuff with bearings in it, but I did it anyways. Oh well, shit happens. That's the way we did it, and that's the way it's gonna run. And if it blows up, then uh, we'll just, we got another block to use. So I'm not too worried about it. And it looks pretty straight to me, because we did line it up with the bell housing, and the bell housing is pretty thick. Now that the block's all welded up, I've got to go to Tokyo's to get my big sponsorship sticker from my main sponsor. Also, Mr. James Hatfield had sent me some photos and showed me the damage to the interior of my transmission. It turns out that one of the thrust bearings actually came apart, so all the needles were in the tray along with like the little cage piece, and that's what I had seen. Um, it probably wouldn't have lasted too long if I ran it like that. But he suspected that the drive shaft length was too long, and I didn't think so because I definitely measured it out right, and it had like an inch when it was at ride height of slack either way. But we did note that the transmission actually moved backwards when I hit the wall, so that might have pounded the drive shaft into the trans further, ruining this bearing because this bearing being wrecked was actually pretty fresh. Ultimately, I'm glad that I sent the transmission off to him to get like looked over all the clutches and everything look fine inside of it. So he's gonna replace that bearing, put it back together, and then we can go pick it up and then put it in the car. But I need a Red Bull first, man. Cause it's early, man, and I need a Red Bull. Actually, it's not early, it's 11.20 in the AM. But let me explain. I just woke up, but it's because I worked night shift tonight. I just got off day shifts and now I gotta work night shifts. So I have to sleep all day in order to work my night shift. Get it? Got it. So the real OGs will know that our merch store first wasn't what it is now where we have this stuff. We actually had Tokyo print us out some stickers on the Harry Potter. Harry Potter. 
And our new sticker is actually in yellow, so we make sure it sticks out on our uh, dark colored car. <laughs> Look at it. I see you looking at me, Nathan. Trying to race me and shit. I see you. <laughs> I win. <laughs> you win. This is actually going to replace this. Because I think this actually makes me go faster than this does. If you know what I mean. So... Maybe we'll just leave this one on and put this one underneath. Because you'll actually... Maybe we'll put it down here, actually. That's probably where you'll see it the most. Right there on that line. So we just gotta find the center line of the window now. I'll put it on. You guys just sit back and I'll put it on. How about that? Look how baby-faced I am with my face shaving, too. Work. You know, I only get on board with like the only, the biggest sponsors known to man. I think that's gonna be a little tension grabbing there. We should design up another one that's bigger and better with like the actual logo and everything. But for now, look at it. That's like, that stands out like a sore thumb. I support my lady, okay? That's, that's just what's going on. She enjoys doing it and having fun and you guys enjoy looking and commenting and be like nice titties. So that's just what it is. I love it, it's awesome, it's fun. She enjoys it, I enjoy it. It's like a win-win. Win, because you get paid for it too. Now, I'm sorry, performance, proform. I don't know what it, the rest of it said because I tore it off already. But I'm sorry, you guys. Carrie worked out a deal with you guys to uh, wrap the car, but I gotta take this off. But maybe if you wanna work with me on a new project and get it rewrapped a different color eventually, maybe we can do that. But for right now, um, Carrie will probably let you know who they were and where they were. I think it was perform mod, you know, me. I don't know. I seriously don't know what it was. But we're gonna try and pull these stickers off, see how good it looks with just this gray color. And then I'll pull the prefer, oh my God. And then I'll pull the precision turbo sticker off the top as well, because uh, we gotta make room for new sponsors, like Milron and Legacy Auto, and then OnlyFans. I probably needed an X275 sticker, but whatever. Actually, now that I'm taking the stickers off, one reason I was scared of wrapping any of my cars was seams everywhere because it only comes in five foot wide sheets. Sometimes you have to have a seam. But after looking at it here, if you got a good guy to do it, I mean, the seam isn't too bad. Unless you're up close and like can really look at it, you don't really see the seam. You can see the um, more of the one underneath that it's overlapping than you can see the seam because it made a dark side where the, there's like a, a little air gap, but. Yeah, it's not so bad. Yep, that looks much better. I wonder, okay, I didn't check, but under the trunk, is this one the same green color? It is. So I mean, if we want to take this wrap off, I think the whole outside of the car is this color. Maybe not the front bumper. Um, maybe it is that color still too. Was this an original Cobra car or did they paint this color to begin with? Cause all the door jams and everything are that color as well. But we're gonna end this video here. I did get the block welded as you can tell here. I probably didn't get good video of it because this camera isn't good for focusing on small things. So it's not good for wiener photos. Then the other side here. Let's go to that angle. Let's just, there you go. It might be a little bit cold, but I tried to weld it up so that there was no uh, spot that it would crack, like there was no place it could form a crack. The only other little thing is this hole is cracked a little bit there too. So I might um, drill this out, like weld this up drill it out and put a helicoil in it because it did strip like the first bit of the threads where the bolt was. And then in reality, this isn't going to be the block we're gonna be using for next season, I don't think. I've been talking with Charlie Eden. He told me a price on what it would cost to get a piston rod motor put together. I do have another Gen 4 block like this. Well, a whole new Gen 4 long block like this. I think I'm just gonna leave that with Charlie and over the winter, I'm gonna try to get get it together and get some pistons and rods in it. That way, beginning of next season, we can start off with a nice strong engine. This thing's just gonna get thrown in there to um, run this season, hopefully. So it might make 
a dozen passes if we're lucky. And then if it holds together, it'll come out and it'll just like, it'll sit on an engine stand to be a backup engine, basically. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take a thumbnail photo. I don't have Virginia here, so we're gonna do a test and see what the difference in views is if I use Virginia in a thumbnail photo versus if I just do one myself. And I know what the results are gonna be, but I'm gonna do it just to prove you guys what it's actually gonna be. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, if you're not subscribed to Dan at DD Speed Shop, subscribe to him too, because he's like one of my new favorite channels. He's got all these old cars, and I'm just like, teach me, because they have carburetors on them. I don't know how that works. But peace, easy, and get that V.